I was coming home one night from an evening of partying and I was high on cannabis. I had taken a couple Xanax pills and had been drinking all night and decided to drive home around three in the morning. I got to a freight train in the middle of the night and as I was waiting for the train to pass, I started to get tired and delirious and I put my head back and I fell asleep and I woke up to police knocking on the window and I opened my eyes, very confused, had no idea what was going on. I rolled down the window and I said to the officer, excuse me officer, was I driving too slow? And he says to me, son, you've been sitting here for about an hour with your car running and your lights on. And I was arrested, I, I got a very bad DUI. I had pot, I had pills, I had liquor in the car, failed my sobriety test. And in high school, I was a top athlete. I played football and was co-captain of the varsity football team with my two best friends. And my coach found out that I had been arrested and gotten this horrible DUI, and so he kicked me off the team immediately. And so I went from being very arrogant and thinking I was invincible to being extremely lost and confused and tortured mentally and emotionally because I had basically sabotaged everything I loved and everything that meant anything to me at that time. After I got kicked off the football team, I fell into a suicidal depression where I was waking up every day tortured mentally and emotionally, totally confused about who I was and what to do with my life. I had grown up around a lot of people who suffered with drug addiction and self-destructive behavior. I realized I was following in my family's footsteps and ruining everything good in my life. The shame and the pain of sabotaging everything that I cared about and everything that I identified with was enough for me to say, I can't keep doing this anymore. I want better for my life. You know, I knew deep down that I could have better, that I could change. I went to five different universities. I studied with spiritual teachers and masters from around the world. And what I eventually realized in my healing journey was that I was really just looking for love and learning how to love myself. I had this clarity that most of our suffering comes from us never learning how to love ourselves as children. And that if we could learn to love ourselves in a practical way now, we could heal and transform anything. I had this very pure, genuine part of me that just wanted to help as many people as I could. And I was very naive and, and innocent in that you know, inspiration and that idea. Once I had had this realization, the next thought was, how can I tell everybody? And then the very next thought was, oh, I have to write a book. And I was 24 years old and I had no idea how to get a book published. And I knew in every cell of my body that I was meant to write this book and as you can imagine, at 24 years old, nobody took me seriously and I was rejected by over 100 agents and publishers altogether. I finally got a contract with one of the biggest personal development publishers in the world. And after five months of editing my project with them, they decided to cancel the budget for the project that I was part of. My biggest dream came true and then out of nowhere, the carpet was pulled out from underneath my feet and I was absolutely brokenhearted and devastated. Eventually, I realized this experience is teaching me that I had to value myself even deeper and say, I'm not gonna wait on anybody to value my ideas or my experience or the things I learned from my pain and from my desire to heal. I self-published, You Were Not Born to Suffer, and I started to promote it. I was living in Australia at the time, and then I started to promote it in the UK and in the US to the point where I was printing distributing, marketing, and teaching on all three continents myself. You Were Not Born to Suffer became a number one best-selling spiritual and self-help book in Australia. Eventually, a traditional publisher approached me, and now it's in 12 languages and is an international bestseller. I wrote my book because I wanted as many people as possible to know that there is a way out of their suffering that's not complicated and it's not expensive and anybody can do it if you're willing to just focus on it and, and do the work. If you're willing to face your pain and face your darkness, that there's nothing you can't heal and there's nothing you can't overcome. We spend so much time waiting for other people to value us or validate us and we hold ourselves back in so many ways. So it's so important that you learn to say that your passion, 
Your joy, your gifts, your magic matters and you don't need to wait on anybody else to say that they're valid or they have value. So you're gonna come across a lot of rejection, whether it's in your personal life, in relationships, or in your professional life with your work. But the key is to stay open, to keep loving, keep expressing your truth, keep being yourself, because the pain of rejecting yourself is far more damaging than the pain of being rejected by other people. I think the truth is, is that life is hard no matter what. And to me, the only thing that really makes life worth living is if you make the things you love, the things that bring you joy, the things that make you feel alive and well a priority. Because if you don't make them a priority and you don't find a way to express who you really are, the things that really matter to you, life's always gonna feel hard. It's always gonna feel painful. I know that when we're stuck and we're suffering and we feel alone, that it's hard to think that there could be something beautiful on the other side of this. But if you're willing to learn how to take better care of yourself and how to follow your heart no matter what, you can take any kind of pain and turn it into something beautiful that's of benefit to you and to the people around you. And I think one thing I learned along the way is that if I don't give up on myself and I keep going and I keep following my heart, even if the whole world doubts me, that life will open doors and bring me opportunities and bring me situations as long as I prove that I'm not gonna give up on myself. If you don't honor that truth inside of you, you're gonna get sick and you're gonna suffer. And life is gonna send you wake up call after wake up call until you listen and start being true to yourself. Please don't give up on your art or your calling because it's the one thing that will carry you through and make your life worth living. For me, my art and my calling has been my true north. It's the only thing I've been able to depend on and that has never let me down. Your art, the way you bring beauty into the world, doesn't have to look like anybody else. Anything can become your art. And I think one of the most beautiful perspectives is that our life can be our masterpiece if we're willing to give our whole heart to it. I went from being in so much pain and not wanting to be here to helping tens of thousands of people all over the world because I didn't give up on myself. I didn't give up on the truth or the love in my heart. And I want that for you because everything can work out if you honor it. We are the love that we're seeking. And if we stop betraying ourselves and abandoning ourselves to please other people and to be loved and liked and approved of, you'll find that you unlock the source of love inside you, and that's ultimately what heals us, fulfills us, and sets us free. Turn your pain into something beautiful. Go make your life worth living. Go make your work in the world worth doing. Use this pain to make the world a kinder, more loving place. I still have days where I suffer or fall into a dark place, but I've figured out how to always take my pain and turn it into healing and then to help other people with theirs or to bring some kind of magic or something good into the world. And so that's really what I want for you is not to give up on this process that you know, no matter how many times you get knocked down, get back up and keep going.